Hey, what's up friends? Hope you are doing well. Today we are creating a simple auto-playing image slideshow with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Despite its simplicity, this feature is widely used in websites and in this video we'll go through a common use case using it in the intro or hero section of our page. Please feel free to share, like, subscribe and without further ado, let's go! Ok, this is our starting point. In the project folder I've created the index.html, style.css and main.js files as well as the images folder containing a few images. In the index.html file I typed some basic HTML5 boilerplate code, inserted the title simple autoplaying image slideshow, linked the external files to the document, the style.css and the main.js files. Both files are currently empty. Notice that instead of placing the script element in the body right above the closing body tag, I placed it in the head using the defer attribute in order for the script to be executed after the document has been parsed and we can now proceed to defining the content for the body. The image slideshow will be contained within the intro section of our page and by the way I can do this due to the Emmet plugin which is by default supported by the Visual Studio Code editor which I'm currently using. And at this point we should decide how to approach the problem in order to create the image slideshow. One way would be using the background image or we could go by adding or removing image elements from the DOM or we could change the value of the source attribute of image elements or, and this is actually the approach we are going to take, we could include all images from the beginning and hide or show images using the display property or opacity or some other CSS property in order to get the effect we want. Ok, let's add the first image we want to display in the slideshow and let's give it a class of slideshow image, source will be images, file name 1.jpg, image file, file names don't have to be 1, 2, 3 etc and in fact in real life projects you are encouraged to use meaningful names since image file names also matter in SEO. And let's add a couple of images. That's all with the HTML markup, but before proceeding to CSS, let's open the project in the browser. For this purpose, I am using the Live Server Visual Studio Code extension. So, this is what we have up to this point, and let's proceed to CSS. For starters, in order to save time I will paste some general styling which is not directly related to the main objective of this video, just importing the Montserrat font family, resetting margin and padding to zero and box sizing to border box for all elements and setting font family to Montserrat, background color to black and color to white for the body. Next, let's proceed to the intro section, which we want to occupy the entire viewport width and height. So let's set height to 100% of viewport height. We don't have to define the width since it is a block level element and therefore occupies the entire width of its parent element, in this case the body. And let's also set position to relative since slideshow images will be absolutely positioned relative to the intro container. Next let's style slideshow images and let's set position to absolute, top to zero and left to zero, so we are starting from the top left corner 
and we want them to expand to the entire width and height of their nearest positioned ancestor, in this case the intro. And by the way, this is the third image, since now images are stacked on top of each other. And in order to preserve the aspect ratio, we can make use of the object fit property and set it to cover. In order to cut off the sides of the image, preserving the aspect ratio. And finally, let's set display property to none. And we will then use JavaScript in order to show or hide images. Now, regarding the initially displayed image, we could do it here. And let's use the first child selector in order to select the slideshow image, which is the first child of its parent. And let's set display property to block. Or we could alternatively use JavaScript in order to define the initially displayed image. OK, let's proceed to JavaScript. For starters, let's store the list of slideshow image elements into a variable for easier access. Notice the method we are using here is query selector all in order to get all slideshow image elements. And if we wanted to be a bit more specific here, I don't know, maybe in case we had more slideshows in our page, we want the intro section slideshow images. Next, let's define the delay before changing an image in the slideshow and let's set it to 3 seconds, 3000 milliseconds. And we'll also need to keep track of the currently displayed image. For this purpose, let's define a counter starting from 0. We used let for this variable instead of const since we expect reassignment of its value. Now, let's begin by displaying the first slideshow image. So, this is now the first slideshow image element and we want to set its display property to block. OK, now every next image delay milliseconds, we want to move on to the next image. For this purpose, let's use the set interval method in order to call the next image function, which we will implement right now, every next image delay milliseconds. And let's implement the next image function. We first want to hide the currently displayed image. We can do this by setting the display property to none. Next, we want to increase counter by one, but this should be modulo slideshow images dot length in order for the slideshow to be repeated cyclically. And finally, we want to display the new current image. Okay, that's all I think. Let's save and see the result. No errors in the console. This is the third image. And we are back to first image. Very nice. Now, if we wanted a smoother transition, instead of using the display property, we could go with opacity. So let's first go back to CSS, comment this out and set a transition for the opacity property 
and let's set transition duration to one second and transition timing function to is in out. Our starting point is zero opacity for all images. And back to JavaScript. All we have to do now is change the opacity value instead of the display value. OK, let's save and see the result. Very nice. Now, one thing we should note is that background color matters in the sense that at some points, for example, when transition is halfway for both images, then background is visible. And in order to make this a bit more obvious, let's change background color to red instead of black. And now you can see the red color upon transition. Personally, I prefer it this way, I mean with black background, not red. However, if we didn't want this, we could alternatively keep the previous image visible until transition for next image is completed and then set opacity of previous image back to zero. Let's quickly do this. So instead of immediately changing opacity of previous image to zero, let's use the set timeout method in order to add some delay before doing it. However, by the time this function is executed, value of current image counter will have changed. So let's store its value before it is changed into a variable and use this instead. Now regarding delay, it doesn't have to be exactly equal to transition duration. For example, if transition duration was 0.75 seconds, then we would still be okay. However, if delay was less than transition duration, then there could be a point where background would be visible. And finally, let's also alter the Z index in order to ensure that next image will be on top of the previous image. In our CSS file, let's set Z index to minus one for all images, just in order to be able to add content on top of images. And back to JavaScript. For previous image, we want to set Z index to minus two. And for the next or current image, we want to set Z index to minus one in order to ensure that it will be on top of the previous image. And by the way, notice the use of camel case for CSS properties since in JavaScript, hyphens can be mistaken as subtraction attempts. Okay, let's save and see the result. Very nice, red background is not visible anymore. And everything seems to be working as intended. Okay, and we are actually done, but let's quickly add some more content to our intro section. Here we are. I will just be pasting stuff from this point since we are done with the main objective of this video, just presenting a use case for our slideshow. I will of course include a link in the description to this project. Now, in order to tidy things up a bit, we could include slideshow images within a div and let's give it a class of intro slideshow. This will not affect anything since slideshow images are positioned and sized relative to the intro container. 
OK and let's add some CSS styling. Let's use Flexbox over intro in order to center its content. And let's add some basic styling for intro header and its content. Notice that I'm using a semi-transparent black background color for intro header in order for the white text to be visible. We could alternatively darken slideshow images using the brightness CSS function over the filter property and reducing the brightness from 100% which is the original to maybe 50%. So we get darker images. However, we won't use this now. And finally, let's add some basic responsiveness for smaller screens. So for screens with 700 pixels or less viewport width, these styling rules will come into effect. Okay, and I think we are done. And let's set next image delay to be at least 5 seconds since we don't want to annoy the user with fast image changes. And of course we could have any number of images here so let's add 2 more images. 4 and 5. Let's save and check the result. Excellent. Okay guys, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. For any questions, suggestions or just to say hi, please use the comment section below. Hit the like button if you like this video and share it with anyone who might be interested. Would be lovely if you joined the journey so please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Till next time, keep coding, keep improving and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye.